Hello and welcome to Other Voices, brought to you by Peninsula Peace and Justice Center. I'm your host, Paul George. On March 25th, people in over 800 cities and towns around the country gathered at rallies to call for rational and sane gun safety measures, much needed. The national actions, dubbed March for Our Lives, were the result of a call to action by high school students the survivors of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas massacre, high school massacre in Parkland, Florida. The 800, rally, 800 plus rallies uh, that sprang up in response to this call to action were themselves organized by high school students. As one of the Florida students said at the rally in Washington, DC, welcome to the revolution, a new generation of activists mobilizing for change. Before I introduce my guests, who are high school organizers, as you might have guessed by now, uh, I'd like to introduce you to some of their handiwork. So we have a clip here from the Redwood City Rally, where 4,000 people gathered on March 25th at the March for Our Lives rally. And that made it one of the largest uh, protest rallies on the peninsula in many, many years. I'm going to return to that topic in just a second. So let's take a look at the clip. <laughs> Fourth, 2018, the Never Again Railroad City March took place in Crowd Square. Organized by, <laughs> by youth leaders, it featured voting registration booths as well as a variety of student speakers demanding gun control and denouncing gun violence. Over 2,000 people showed up. Reporting for Scott Center News, I'm Victoria Valerie Mund. This is what democracy looks like. What we really need is change. We have the recognition, we have the platform, we just need to keep going and make sure that that's something that we keep our hold on because it's something that's so easily lost. Like after Sandy Hook, after Pulse, after the Las Vegas shooting, people quickly, the movement lost momentum and right now this movement is so strong and we have so many places to go and a lot of that is student driven and that's why I thought this was an incredible thing to join. We are here for three reasons. Gun reform, school safety, and community activism. That being said, we must not forget the seriousness of why we are here. This is bigger than me, bigger than us, bigger than Parkland. What we choose to do at this moment will determine the future safety of our children, siblings, and grandchildren. And I am for more gun control. I am for getting uncomfortable with the other side. Have dialogues. Get out there, talk to someone who doesn't agree with you. Um, there's children dying in schools and it doesn't seem like people are acting appropriately. So I think despite what your beliefs are on gun control or the Second Amendment, that you need to, there needs to be a solution no matter what that solution is. There's different solutions that we could create, but there needs to be one. This, this event was able to bring together both adults and young people. And I, I feel like, you know, that combination is crucial to really being able to bring change. So many students were getting together. And as a student, this is something that's so touching to me. And seeing everyone else here, just knowing that people were united, that was something I wanted to take part in. I wanted to show my support for these people. I hope that this creates more active young people. I hope that this create students that aren't only passionate about th this issue, but are gonna go on to become active uh, adults and, who are passionate about a variety of issues and are gonna vote in every election and are gonna be aware and literate and uh, gonna read the news and, and, and know what their government's doing. And that was the rally in Redwood City on March 24th. I've been saying March 25th in introducing this program. And joining me on Other Voices this month are some of the organizers of that fantastic rally. Uh, welcome, and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves, starting with you. Um, my name is Sophie Penn. I'm a senior at Carmont High School. Um, and what really inspires me is the passion of the people around me, and like my fellow organizers and all of the students that I've seen both that I know personally and across the country. Great. Um, I'm Stefan Sujanski. I'm a senior at Woodside High School. And um, what really drew me into this was actually uh, 
some of my activism in the in the March 14th rallies as well. And I, you know, I've I've kind of grown up in this era of mass shootings. You know, I've I've known nothing else. Um, so that kind of this, being tired with that is is definitely driven me towards this. Yeah. And um, at the end, Rhea. <laughs> I'm Ria Calcano. I'm a senior at Woods Ed also. Um, and what made me participate in this is um, kind of the same thing that makes me participate in a lot of other social justice um, activities, which is just that um, throughout my life, I've had people of all ages who stood up for things, and that really made a difference in my life. And so I just try to do the same thing for other people in the hopes that they might do the same thing. Okay, well, welcome to all of you. I'm glad you're joining us. Some of you are still in the middle of finals. Graduation <laughs> is this Friday, is it correct? Yeah. So congratulations on, on that as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank um, you. I, I mentioned the size of the rally. It's 3,000, 4,000 people, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the record for the largest protest rally on the peninsula, I happen to know this, it was in February of 2003, just before the invasion of Iraq by the United States, when 5,000 people gathered at Palo Alto City Hall. I was the organizer of that rally, so thank you for not breaking my record, <laughs> but congratulations on coming very close. <laughs> so let me actually start before the rally and, and before Parkland. At, at your respective high schools, how much conversation was there around gun violence, and especially around school safety related uh, to the, the gun violence issue? Um, Go ahead. Uh, well, I'm in journalism at my high school, so it was very prevalent in our lives for a while. It was something that was consistently being discussed in class, and some of my, like my history class would talk about it too. So it was very much on everybody's minds for a while, which is what really like helped draw my interest in and made me decide that I did want to actually take some sort of action. Uh-huh. Interesting. Um, I know for, at Woodside, or at least within my friend group, this was kind of the, this was definitely uh, the biggest high school shooting that we had experienced as high schoolers. Yeah. So this, this, this was a lot more personal than a, a lot of the other mass shootings yeah. um, that, that we had really uh, experience it and well not experience but read about and heard about right um so i i think that there was there was definitely a lot more genuine fear um connected to this after parkland happened. after parkland after so parkland. It, it wasn't so much a concern i mean the thing of... was with other school shootings since unfortunately they do happen fairly often um people would talk about it and have feelings about it shortly after right but it, it would last a few days maybe yeah um this was the only one where it really continued for a long amount of time um especially which is demonstrated by these rallies because they happened a whole month i believe after the shooting and that kind of even though that's not very long that longevity <laughs> um ha is something that only happened with this one with the other ones it was really very short attention span so the, the shock uh, of, of Parkland after it happened, how long did it take you to start getting things together to, to do a join in um, part of the national rally? So um, at least on my end, um, we all kind of came together on this a bit separately. On my end, so I'm the student trustee for our school district. Um, so I'm like on the school board. And so one of the other school board members. Is that what that members, means? You're, yeah, um, there's one one student representative who is a voting member on the board, which is really cool. Yeah, um, neat. But one of the other um, trustees emailed me about it because um, she was contacted by Shelley Masur, who is a Redwood City um, councilwoman, um, and she was really wanting us to um, do something about this um, and wanted me to get people together from the different schools. So. Um, I got Stefan and um, a few other of the student body presidents from other schools. And then um, Sophie and our, the, another main organizer, Holly, um, they were already working mm -hmm. with it. Um, yeah, so... Hey, go. <laughs> go for it. Okay. <laughs> so I was kind of reached out to by my journalism advisor. Um, he knows that I've been like very passionate about gun control and different political issues. 
So he was contacted by Belmont Councilman uh, Charles Stone, who basically reached out to him and said, I want to find students who are passionate and who are interested in doing something, and I want to enable them to organize their own event in a local area, basically. And so he kind of brought that up to me, and I met with Charles through that, and then eventually got connected with Rhea and Stefan. Yeah, and, and Holly, who was going to join us here, but I then she had yeah. something come up at uh, school <laughs> this evening. Um, I, I'm interested to hear that, and I'm, and I'm glad to hear that the various city council people wanted the students to, to take the lead in this. I, I know at the Peace and Justice Center, because we put on a lot of demonstrations, people expect us. And so I got some emails and phone calls, people saying, what are you going to do about this shooting? And I said, I'm going to help publicize whatever the high school students in this area do. Because uh, it was wrong. Yeah, it just that. was <laughs> not for us to go out there and, and organize something. So we did publicize your rally. Thank you. Thank you very I, we much. We accounted for 2,321 of your attending. No. <laughs> <laughs> All thanks to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so first there was the, the walkout on March 14th. Was that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Did your schools participate in that? Yeah, so I was actually one of the organizers for uh, my school's March 14th walkout. I put it in quotes because it was more of like a, a walk-in. Uh -huh. um, I worked with administrators at the school to allocate uh, a certain amount of time uh, during the school day for students to uh, be able to come out and not only register to vote, but to have a platform um, through which they could, you know, speak about the issue to other students and, and uh, really, you know, make posters and all of that. and. I mean, the reason uh, a lot of students were disappointed that, uh, you know, there had been cooperation with the administration in, in these walkouts, they, they felt like, you know, that kind of took away from the point of the walkout, right? It's, just, it's uh -huh. this, you know, you're, you're really sticking it to the man in, in, in a walkout. So uh, working with administrators uh, seemed a little confusing. But my, my reasoning behind that was more that not everybody has a car. Not everybody can go out and, and go march to a, a different location where, where uh, other students were meeting. So I wanted to create you know, a safer, uh, more, more open spot on campus, campus where conversations could be had. So that, that, was, that was at least my part of it. Was there any kind of dialogue around this? I mean, did you have any debates with people? We, we should cooperate or we should just walk? Or Yeah, Rhea and I were sitting in the same meeting when, yeah. <laughs> when uh, administration pitched us, pitched us this idea. Yeah, we had to um, negotiate so, a little bit. Yeah, we negotiated a little bit, and I, I know, um, you know, I'm involved in student government, um, so I, I spent a lot of time speaking with constituents that way um, with, throughout the different grades, um, and there were definitely mixed opinions there. But at, at the, I think at the end of the day, students were generally yeah, appreciative that they had been given this opportunity. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of schools... Um, my partner and I went up to uh, Los Altos High School because we live in Los Altos, and they did the same thing. It was all on campus, so there were a bunch mm -hmm. of adults out on the sidewalk with our signs looking over <laughs> <and> across <laughs> campus, and participating that way. Um, so that certainly was kind of standard operating procedure. So did you, for the, the big rally in, in Redwood City on the, on the 24th, did you have a standing committee? How were you structurally organized? We chose not to have one of us kind of act as a president or leader of our group because it was very much like a grassroots thing that we were doing. It was very like raw and very like natural. We weren't really like, we didn't really know what we were doing um, <laughs> to say the least. But so we just would all meet um, the four of us. We had a couple other students come and meet with us a few times too um, from different schools in the district. And we would meet at the same Starbucks every single time. Um, it was right across the street from the courthouse so we could like see our venue. Um, that's a good idea, yeah. And that's where we made most of our decisions and it was very democratic. Um, we didn't really have any like conflicts with each other, which was really lucky. Um, so we would just kind of bring new things to the table each time, talk about it, and then reach a consensus. Had any of you organized any kind of protest rally before this? Not protest rally. We're, um, I mean, from our student government experience, we've organized other events, events but not yeah. um, so You, you know the, the basics, but mm -hmm. yeah. how did you approach organizing a, a protest rally? Um, what, you know, 
our checklist of what we need <laughs> yeah. is, is um, a blank page. Yeah. The, so yeah. we, we had a couple adults helping us out. Um, they definitely let us take the reins and direct it the way we wanted it to, but they provided support to us, um, particularly the two um, council people and um, Soph's um, journalism teacher. Um, so they, they were more familiar with the process, and whenever we had questions, they um, would help us out more with logistics and saying, OK, well, you need to get remember to get this. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that the main thing that we were focusing on um, was how to get people to come to it and participate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and generally the way it was organized, in which where we, we would uh, brainstorm our needs. We wanted, we knew we wanted representatives from political organizations uh, where students could, you know, learn more about different ways they can get involved. Uh, we knew we wanted voter registration, and we knew we wanted uh, a platform from which uh, mm -hmm. students could speak about the topic. So that was, those were kind of the three big parts, and you know we delegated work based off of that. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, did you have an agreement of um, what the political position was going to be for the rally? Certain demands that, that you wanted to make, and and what was that discussion like coming up with with the the demands? That's often the most challenging yeah. part of doing coalition <laughs> yeah. work. I mean, I think it's an ongoing discussion for yeah. us, yeah. definitely. I'm glad yeah. to hear that, Figuring actually. out yeah. where this is going. Um, but I think for this particular event, we didn't want to, as a group, have uh, an opinion uh, in terms of like a particular policy. We wanted, um, we more just wanted to use this as an opportunity to give other students to share their opinions and what they thought should happen and just create an open dialogue for other people to speak. We also were acting, because we were representing the National March for Our Lives movement, we tried to kind of distance our personal political opinions from um, the all-encompassing movement. And we did want to align like what we were doing with the national movement, because we were working under that name. How would you summarize the national movement's positions? I, obviously, they weren't calling for say, a ban on assault rifles, uh, a lot of emphasis on voter registration mm -hmm. and responding that way. Um, I think, I think uh, what the national movement did well is they, obviously they wanted, uh, it was clear that they wanted stricter background checks and they wanted it to be more difficult uh, to obtain a gun. But outside of that, they left specific policies pretty open. They understood that students held different opinions and different views, and they too uh, did a very good job you know, focusing more on the discussion that needed to be had because of this um, than actually, you know, forcing one, one, uh, one policy. Now, I don't think it would have gotten the support that it did had they had they, you know, forced mm -hmm. this one Definitely. ban on assault. Yeah, kind violence. of a kind of a, a a recognition that the issues and the approaches in different communities vary greatly across this exactly. across yeah. this country. Um, speaking of the the national movement. How much contact did you have with them? Was it all mostly just online and stuff? It was mostly online. We were following the social media accounts, so we were kind of seeing what they were posting and how they were going about their advertising. And like, we definitely drew from that for our own advertising. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any direct communication, although we did get a grant from a national organization that was providing um, grants of. Five thousand dollars to any event that was registered on the March for Our Lives site. Wow. Yeah, it was really <laughs> generous. Well, I might have organized a rally if I had yeah, five thousand dollars. Was, yeah. <laughs> was that the bulk of your uh, budget, so to speak? Yeah, that yes. was pretty much our whole budget and because I, one of my questions yeah. was, how did you pay for the great T-shirts? Yeah, that show? was how. Yeah, that was honestly a lot of it. It wasn't too expensive of an event to put on because aside from the t-shirts and the speakers I think yeah. um, it was just a lot of volunteers everyone yeah. just wanting to volunteer their time um, so we really didn't have to spend any money on it because everyone just wanted to do this for the community yeah how many people do you think were directly volunteering that day I, I was there and it, it <laughs> you a had a great staff number, yeah. Yeah. yeah I would say 40? Yeah, 40 yeah. or 50 40, volunteers 50. Yeah. there from, yeah. yeah. And how many schools, all told, were kind of directly involved in organizing the Redwood City Rally? Um, well, in organizing it, it was 
the schools of our district, um, the, the four comprehensive um, schools, so Woodside, Carlmont, Sequoia, and um, MA. But on, but um, on top, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. But on top of that, we, we had speakers and, and yeah. uh, some other volunteers from schools outside of the district, mm -hmm. uh, district like Gunn High School and, uh, and Bellarmine. We had a representative mm -hmm. from Bellarmine. So um, we, yeah. were, we were happy with the, the widespread interest. Yeah, and then like attendees too. There were yeah. from um, all, all sorts of the private schools in the district yeah. and the other public schools outside of our district. Yeah, I, I know reading on... Um, I should have mentioned when we ran the clip that uh, Sophie is your editor in chief of the journalism program. Yeah, is that? of the video publication. Of yeah. the video. So this is really her work. This oh. this clip. But, <laughs> it's um, not mine. <laughs> well, somebody else produced it. You oversee it. Um, now I lost my train of thought. I forgot <laughs> what I wanted to ask. It was related to what I saw in the clip. Um, anyway, uh, there was. One of the impressive things about the, the big rally in Washington, D.C., was that they had, they, they made a big effort not to focus just on gun violence in schools, but gun violence, um, they had speakers yeah. who were confronting gun violence as kind of a day-to-day, -day daily. Yeah. Did you talk about trying to address that. What were your discussions around that? Because I, I found that to be one of the most impressive things about the Washington rally and what they continue to, to say mm -hmm. and, and include. That we're going to talk about their upcoming bus tour and they're including um, those kinds of communities. Yeah. How did you deal with that and think about it? So, you know, personally, I, I think that um, that was one of the the blind spots that we had in our rally. We were you know, from because our organizers um, were from communities that weren't necessarily uh, as in touch with with day to day, you know, gun violence. Yeah. Um, and and we we really didn't consider bringing in organizers uh, who were who who were from these communities. Yeah. Um, that really didn't factor in as much to our to our uh, the organization of the rally and, and kind of the discussion about that as well. Right. But I mean. It, we're we're working towards changing that. Sure. Uh, obviously, we're we'll talk later about uh, what, what every, we planned. You know, but, um, every time you do a rally, even if you had thought of that, there would have been something else that you didn't think yeah. of, and you'll say next time, I want to be sure to to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I was wondering about that. So, um, how did you do? Uh, you know, publicity and outreach is always a major thing. You, you ended up with three to four thousand people mm -hmm. in the streets. That's a heck of a lot of outreach. Mm. How did you do that? Um, <laughs> All I, social media? <laughs> it, that, that's I, what people would assume. <laughs> not completely all. Um, I did a lot of the publicity for the event. So I was running the Instagram account that we created. Um, Holly, who's not here, was running our Twitter account. And then on top of that, I was um, like making press releases and sending those out to all of the big news corporations, um, a lot of independent reporters and like I worked with my journalism advisor to come up with a comprehensive list to send that out to and I was reaching out to different media representatives and asking for advice with media oh, um, good for you. so it was a lot of different factors to coming together and like um, Rio went and hung up posters in like all of the local businesses around the square like a couple days before um, we had flyers at school we all announced it at our rallies on the 14th so it was a big mixture of things, really, but I think social media was definitely a huge factor and in it. And of course, it was online at the March for Our Lives main site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We there. registered it there too. Rio, you took posters around to local businesses. Were mm -hmm. they? I, I'm guessing <laughs> they were pretty receptive. Um, yeah, the, it, none of them. Um, the only ones who uh, declined were just because they didn't let anyone hang up posters yeah. around there. Um, but yeah, everyone was generally supportive. A few people even asked me about it, like, oh, what's that? When, when's it going to be? Um, yeah, so uh -huh. Good. generally supportive. Were you uh, satisfied with the media coverage you ultimately ended up with? Uh, uh, 
this is one of the things is you work <laughs> all all these hours and you work so hard and you go out that day and have the rally and then you go home exhausted and sit there and wait to see your two minutes on channel yeah. seven you know i i don't think we really ended up get, getting very much media coverage of course um i very much pushed my publication to go and cover it yeah. um <laughs> which they did um but boy that would have been really embarrassing if I you know, know, if my, own, my own publication won't cover it who will <laughs> Um, so we had student reporters and my whole journalism program actually put out this huge package um, online for it, but we didn't really get um, a ton of professional reporters. I think the San Mateo Daily Journal published a photo and they did coverage of um, all of the marches that were happening in the, yeah. I don't know if it was the district or just the area, but they were covering a lot of different stuff, so we had like a snippet in there. Um, I think it's hard to cover something like this that's so local when there's these national rallies and these like big marches happening in San Francisco and San Jose and Berkeley. It's we're not we didn't expect to get a ton of media attention just because the coverage that day was so widespread. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and Washington D.C. was such a an historic event really, mm -hmm. and a lot of great um, footage from there. Uh, what about Stefan and Rhea? Were you happy to? Uh, with the, the coverage, I mean, did you understand it or? You know, I, I think news about it ended up getting to the people that mattered, and that's the students. I know that uh, I'm huh. involved in uh, student journalism uh, as well at Woodside, and I know that we had people out there covering it as well, and that uh, yeah, Carl Mont, you, know, you guys have tons of students reading your guys' papers, so they, they, yeah. they do a great job with that. So I, <laughs> if, um, <laughs> if, uh, if students are the ones who read about it, if students are the ones who go out and, and they hear, you know, oh, he, see these examples of, of people going out and being politically active and, and seeing examples of their peers going out and being politically active, um, then I'm fine with that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we'd like to get more news coverage from, from uh, news, news sources that older people and, or adults um, are more, more likely to watch. Uh, I was happy with the coverage for young people. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because it's not really... Um, Necess like that type of media outlet isn't really necessary to get it spread amongst um, people our age. It was definitely spread a lot via social media, people posting on their Instagrams yeah. and Snapchats. Um, so it it got it definitely got where it needed to go via that. I would say our biggest prop coverage was probably all the people who came because yeah. we yeah. saw like a ton of stuff being posted on social media and like our accounts were getting tagged. So I think that definitely was our main source. And, and I assume that was your goal, was to reach your peers and activate them and mobilize them and get them involved in this struggle. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, anything about the rally before, anything else about the rally you want to mention before we move on to kind of what's next and what you're... Um, well, I, you know, I, I really saw the rally as, as sort of just this testament. I know that, you know, it's, uh, kind of the state of technology and the internet has made everything so fast-paced and has oftentimes, you know, made people forget about events like these, this because just because the news cycle is so fast. But I saw this really as an example of um, technology being used to our advantage in this case. And I, you look at the people that we just brought out, you know, we didn't spend thousands of dollars on advertising and all of that. This was just through word of mouth, through, through, uh, through Instagram, through Snapchat, through these social media sites and through technology. And um, so I, I, I think that this is, this is a great example of technology being used for good. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to point out the, just the importance of local events like this. Because yeah. what obviously there were huge like historic events um, happening the same day. Um, so you kind of think about, well, why didn't we just go join the San Francisco one why or did, the San yeah. Jose one? Um, but I think that this type of event is really important because there are a lot of people who can't go to those sort of events. Um, you know, disabled people, I'm like partially disabled, um, uh, elderly people, people with younger children, um, that those type of events just aren't that accessible. So these type of events that are more local and more accessible are really important so that everyone has the opportunity to get involved. Um, and the second thing was also going off of our main purpose, which is what to give people our age a voice. Um, 
this event provided the opportunity for a lot of people our age to actually go and be speakers and share their feelings, which they wouldn't necessarily have gotten if they just attended one of the larger events. Um, and I think we accomplished um, both of those things. Yeah, you sure did. The speakers, I, I think, were pretty uni uniformly terrific. Um, were some of them uh, very first time public speakers? And... I was. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think a lot of the speakers hadn't really done that, something like that before, and I know a lot of them coming up were like really nervous and stuff, but I kind of told them all before they spoke, or some of them, one of them maybe, I was like, it doesn't matter if you mess up, it doesn't matter if like people don't clap as loudly for you, or if you don't say something correctly, or you stumble, because like that's not what we're here for, we're not here to perform, we're here to right. really make a statement and push for gun control and so our individual performances in my mind at least didn't really matter as much because it wasn't why we came. Yeah and the the collective result was uh, was really terrific and the the attendees there the three or four thousand however many there were um, there were some old geezers like me there but <laughs> it was um, very young crowd. You must have been really happy that so many students actually responded to your call. Absolutely. Yeah, because that's who you were trying to reach. So what are you up to now? What is, what's, um, <laughs> where do you take all this energy that has built up? What are you working on? Sure. So, um, you know, uh, we've still been meeting regularly as a group. Good. In fact, we've begun bringing in, now that we're all seniors and we're going to graduate, uh, we've started bringing in people who are sophomores and who are juniors to kind of continue the work that we've been doing um, and to kind of keep student interest keep, keep student interested in, uh, in this topic especially in this election cycle um, we've actually begun planning an event on August 4th um, hmm. which is uh, a focus a focused uh, on voter education and and it's going to likely include, you know, uh, food trucks and student bands and, and speakers from who, who, who focus on different topics that uh, are relevant to students. So this is going to be a lot more focused on, on um, voting and learning how to vote. And we, we recognize, you know, the first first was our, our first event was a protest showing that we were we were uh, we wanted change. And when we saw that there was no response from our Congress, now our solution is to take change who's in Congress. Right. So uh, where is this going to be on August 4th? Same place. Yeah, same, same place. Yeah. Court House Square in Redwood City. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. 6 all right. to 9 p.m. is the current plan. How was it dealing with the authorities in Redwood City to set that up? Did you have to go through a permit process and stuff? Or? We did. Um, luckily, one of the Congress people who kind of brought us all together um, was like, I'll take care of securing the permit. So. Charles Stone actually um, got the permit for us to use that venue, and who's Charles Stone? Charles Stone is a Belmont congressman. Ah. Um, so he did that, and we talked to him throughout that process, and we were all emailing each other about it, um, just because I think he wanted to kind of give us a very strong start. Um, and they were him and uh, Shelley Mazur were kind of there as our logistical advisors, I guess you would say. Uh -huh. um, so they were like, we can take care of like the little nitpicky things it, that you delegate to us, and then you guys will do the whole like planning and the outreach and all of that. Yeah. Who's responsible for the sound system that broke that right at the beginning of the rally? That happens it all the time. It actually didn't break. We couldn't turn it on. Yeah. <laughs> we, we hadn't realized that the sound system, our, our electricity, wasn't turned on at the venue uh, um, for whatever reason. They just hadn't turned it on, even though we had booked it, yes. which is okay. Yes. Um, and so we had to run and find a representative to come and turn it on really quickly. Yeah. And then we had a small speaker that had been brought yeah. in as a backup, well, luckily, which we, yeah. Yeah, which we <laughs> planned on using if all else failed. But luckily, we were able to turn it on with just a couple minutes. Sorry late. to bring <laughs> up such a painful memory. No. It's, okay. <laughs> it's okay. We've gotten Flash past backs. it. <laughs> so. So you're, I'm really glad to hear you're, you're reaching out to um, other grades or activists who, who are going to be there because um, I, I run into this all the time in working with students and the groups I usually contact and are in touch with are 
uh, college level and stuff. But it's a problem because everybody goes away during the summer. Mm -hmm. Then when they come back in the fall, it's a whole different set of people. I have no idea how to get a hold of anybody. <laughs> They don't know I'm around because the seniors that all graduated forgot to leave a contact for the Peace and Justice Center. Or something. What? So this kind of continuity is, is, really, um, is really important. Thank you. Yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be key in continuing this, not just here, but um, with many of the Parkland students and other students around because it has been, it's, at least it seemed like it's been a lot of upperclassmen leading the charge, and so it'll... In order to continue this movement, it'll really be important to um, make the, the younger kids um, carry this along. Yeah, and we talked earlier about how we might not have had the representation that we wanted uh, among the leadership of the, uh, of, or, or the organizers of the event. Uh, previously, you know, we, we didn't touch on kind of the day-to-day -day violence that a lot of people encounter. So this time around, we're actually working to make changes with that. We've invited several members um, of these underrepresented groups to become part of the organizing team. Um, just right. so that, yeah, just so that we can attract uh, diff di all demographics, mm -hmm. and um, we really see we really see as attracting you know people who deal with this on a more day to day basis as kind of a crucial part to creating su a sustainable movement because you know it, if if people don't see this every day, there's a chance they'll forget about it. Yeah, uh, I think this is one of the things the national group has. Uh, again, done so well. I mentioned that before, and I, I'm really glad you're aware of that and, and working on that. It, it's not easy to do, but because um, gun violence isn't just high schools. Um, and and I, Parkland was so shocking. I, I'm glad it's the re, one result has been to, to spark this movement, but um, the gun violence is per, pervasive, and we need to be taking an overall encompassing approach if we're going to get an overall encompassing response mm -hmm. um, the, the kind of legislation that, that we need to do I, I want to turn to our studio audience and because we always uh, want to get everybody in on the conversation and so uh, what I'll ask you to do is put your hands up if you have a question or a comment and wait till Crystal arrives with the microphone and when she does if you if it's not a problem to stand up, please stand up for that. Before we go to the first question, let me uh, <laughs> let me just I, I wanted to follow up one thing on on the voter registration coming up. The um, sorry, I I thought it would take longer for the microphone to get there, <laughs> so I was I thought I was filling, and then you were. But um, the the national movement has just announced new plans. So I, I'm sure mm -hmm. there's not a lot there for um, what are they calling it? Um, Bus tour. Road to Change, um, where they're doing a bus tour to, I think, 50 cities and focusing on voter registration. And they're, they're going to be focusing in, uh, as I understand it, um, congressional districts where the incumbent is getting substantial contributions from the National Rifle Association. Um, before we started taping, you, you mentioned you were trying to look into this, but I, I guess this is early on, but you hope to be involved in, in this effort somehow? I mean, if, if they, it's unlikely that they would be coming by here, just given um, the general opinion on this subject um, around the Bay Area. But if they, if they were to um, come here, um, we, we would really like to, we were talking about trying to link up somehow. Um, yeah since they're doing it over the summer um, with our event that we're having, but um, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, um, I, well, I hope that can, that can work. Maybe uh, you can fill a couple of buses if they go to Fresno or something <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. target yeah. Devin Nunez, who needs <laughs> some targeting. Some All right, <laughs> here to the audience. Yes, thank you. Well, let's see. Um, first, I just wanted to say that was such a terrific video. I was just oh, blown away when I saw it online a couple days after I went to the rally. You know, the rally was wonderful, and it was great to be there with all these other people. But you did such a beautiful job of showing different aspects that a person standing in one place couldn't appreciate. And you echoed what people were saying um, at the mic with people holding signs in the crowd and all of those kinds of aspects. So you just represented it so clearly and beautifully, so thank you. 
And then secondly, what I really wanted to get to was, um, I'm very glad to hear that you're trying to find ways to um, follow up on the inclusivity that the national um, rally made a theme of, of gun violence is a daily reality for so many people in so many parts of the US. And what we really have to try to find is a way to address that general problem where people are not safe just being in their communities, going out to play basketball with their friends or walking home from church. That's the really huge change that we have to address. And I'm really glad that you're looking for ways to make more um, connections here in our immediate area on that subject. So I wondered if you had more to say about how you think you may be able to follow up on that. It's not easy when you're with summer, people have other plans, lots of people are going off to college away from this area, but I really hope you'll be able to find a way to plant that so that it can grow from all the work you've already done. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, first of all. Um, we definitely do live in kind of a bubble where we don't see a lot of this day-to-day -day gun violence and our areas are just we're very sheltered in that way. Um, so we are reaching out to find student leaders from these underrepresented communities that can actually speak on that because we know that we don't have that perspective and we want to find people that do. Um, I mean, if we even look at like East Palo Alto, we have a city with really, really high crime rate and there's definitely like a lot of gun violence there. It's been worse in, mm -hmm. the, pa worse in the past, but it's still a very prevalent problem and it's so close to us, yet at the same time, we tend to sort of overlook it. Yeah. East Palo Alto Academy is actually um, a school in our district, um, but it's kind of a, it's more of a charter, so it's not as included um, in a lot of the discussions as the other schools, but we are reaching out to students from those schools. I have a contact at that school, actually, who I receive updates from and present it to the school board every meeting. Um, but then in addition to that, um, you can talk a bit about who you've been reaching out to. Um. Yeah. Um, so we have um, a lot of organizations or a lot of clubs on campus at, at Woodside and I know at other campuses as well, um, which are clubs that focus on the needs um, and, and interests of these underrepresented, oftentimes minority, low income groups. Um, and these, this includes the Dreamers Club, which focuses on undocumented students, uh, the Young Latino Leaders. Um, so reaching out to the leaders of these clubs who already, you know, possess these leadership skills and are very interested in social activism and bringing them in, kind of into, you know, onto our team, stealing them away, um, is, is definitely one strategy that we're using um, across the district. It's also a good idea when you're organizing is to start um, to go to where people are already organized. So mm -hmm. clubs or yeah. churches or something where there's already organization because then you talk to them and bring along all these people instead of yeah. trying to talk to, to individuals. All right, back here. Okay, already got the mic, so you're next. <laughs> and I, hold it right up there. I'd just like to start by saying thank you to all three of you and to all the people I'm sure who worked with you, but you are an inspiration to us. Um, and you, you bring hope to some of us who have really felt despair with things that are happening. Um, I'm really, I'm really impressed with what you've been able to do. Um, and I just have a question for any of the three of you who would like to answer of, I know y'all are heading off to college in the fall. Do you have um, thoughts or plans about how you might keep the, um, the lessons that you've learned and all of this experience that you've gained and how you might capitalize on that moving forward? Absolutely. Um, I'm like moving across the country for college, so I won't really have any of the same contacts I have here, unfortunately. Um, that being said, I definitely plan on getting involved in social activism on campus. Um, I want to get involved at, with broadcast journalism, and I kind of want to just see what's there and what needs more attention and kind of go with that, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to be going to school in Washington, D.C. next year, which is kind of, you know, it's a great place to be if you're interested in politics. And um, so I, I hope to use the skills that I learned here not only to work with politicians um, around that area and, and, and maybe intern with the politicians um, who are uh, helping fight 
the gun lobby and, and, and help fight for reasonable gun control measures. But also, um, you know, use, use the skills, use the communication skills and the organizational skills that I learned here um, to organize other events there as well in Washington, D.C., where unfortunately gun violence is, is prevalent as well. Um, so that's just me personally. Um, unlike them, I will be staying around here for college, um, which is good because I will be able to kind of keep an eye on the, the kiddos that we're <laughs> leaving this movement to. Um, so that's, that's one way, just um, uh, leave, leaving it to them, but also be, being there as a resource should they need it. Um, I'd say conceptually something that I'll carry with me is um, throughout high school, I've had experience organizing events in school, um, but not really so much in the community and in, in the real world. Um, so organizing this um, in the community and not having it just be students, but um, people of all ages um, coming to this event in the community, not really through our schools, um, really showed me that we can make a difference, not just through school things, but going out into the community and organizing things there. So that's something I'm definitely um, going to be focusing on there. And also, um, one quick comment. Um, thank you for what you said and everyone for your support. Um, and you mentioned that you attended the rally. So thank you for attending. We really did um, appreciate everyone who came um, and everyone who continues to support. Because definitely, while the students are doing um, a lot, we it's, it's not something that would make any change if it was if it was just us. So, yeah. Um, thank you to all of you. All right. Well put. Hey, have any of you started checking out activist opportunities at your uh, soon-to-come campuses? Um, Stanford has a, a Stanford. You're, you're in, going to Stanford. Yeah. Um, Stanford in government um, program. Uh, so that it it. it more it, it provides, there's a few people who are in it, but it more provides services to the rest of the students trying to get them involved in the democratic process and um, leading other students to other opportunities for them to get involved. So I'd really like to be a part of that. Yeah, neat. Um, yeah, while well, I was looking at the college I'm going to be going to next year, um, I... Where are you I, going? Uh, I'm going to Georgetown next year. All right. And um, I, I definitely made a point to you know, ask questions and focus on the social justice and community service part of it. And I know that they do a lot of work in their community there as well. Um, some of it focused on, uh, some of it focused on violence in the community, but a lot of it focused on uh, education, uh, access to, to food, um, poverty, issues like this. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to be in, involved and in, in, in interested in that next year. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will be going to Syracuse and um, I actually, when I went there to visit, I saw like a protest happening on campus. So you ran That's, right over so I was, like, <laughs> Almost. I was like ready to go. I didn't quite know what was happening, but I was like, all right, I'm with it. Um, but I definitely have heard a lot about it being a very active campus politically, and they have a huge journalism program there. So I am absolutely planning on getting involved, whether it's through different journalism programs or whatever I saw. I want to be a part of that. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it reminds me of something that happened uh, quite a number of years ago in the, during the Bush administration. Uh, I had gotten a call from somebody who works at the Hoover Institute and said, this isn't public, but George Bush is coming here tomorrow for a special meeting. So I put the word out, and thousands of students came out to keep George Bush from <laughs> getting on campus. But when we got over there, I realized that it was campus visiting day, and there was these students from all over the oh, country no. coming to see the Stanford campus. And they all came over and joined that rally. <laughs> I talked to one mother from Ohio or something. She was just thrilled. She, she said, this is where I want my kids to go. <laughs> <laughs> so they, that can be inspiring. We had another question back here. So here comes the microphone. I want to also thank you for doing this work. I know it's very difficult to get things organized and to get groups of people to work together. Uh, do you have any influence over your parents? <laughs> uh, because some people say at Woods High, Woodside High School, and more so perhaps in the private schools in this area, are wealthy and powerful, the adults. And uh, do you have any influence over them? Is there any 
program or something to try to get them to be, you know, open their paychecks and their power <laughs> on this cause. Wasn't there, there some kind of uh, parent pledge thing that was floated around for, for a while for March for Our Lives to mm, ask sure. parents to get I, to I know, sign a pledge to vote for people who? I know, I know for our uh, August 4th event, we're definitely reaching out to uh, contacts who, who will be able to donate money to the event since we won't have access to the grant that we did. Uh -huh. So in, in that sense, we are, we are you know, trying to influence uh, not necessarily our parents, but other people in our community to <laughs> give us some cash. <laughs> Is there a role, though, in a, in a youth-led movement to focus on changing adult minds? Um, not, not just the elected officials, but things like talking to parents and saying, you've got to vote. You know, it's re really important that you vote for somebody who doesn't take NRA money and things yeah. like that. I mean, yeah, I think it's definitely an important, I mean, of course, we're trying, any movement is trying to get as many people as possible, regardless sure. of age. Um, right now, with the events that we're focusing on, we're more focusing on that um, student demographic, um, but we're, we're not sure, like, where, where it's going to go, so definitely um, in the future, perhaps. Yeah. But also, by us focusing on trying to educate um, people our age and, and get them active in voting, uh, I think it'll just be a natural byproduct that many of them will start to continue those conversations with their parents and the adults good point. that they know. That's a very parents good point. are oh, sorry. Go ahead. Parents are definitely a really like big supporter of the things we're doing, and it is really important to have that um, that support and that. Yeah, I don't know where it's going with that, yeah. but um, <laughs> it definitely is very crucial. A lot of parents kind of dragged some of their kids to the rally, I think. Um, yeah. A lot of kids came on their own, but it was definitely helpful to have the parents who were so invested in what we were doing, and they kind of had the older perspective on politics and on gun control, and they, I think, can kind of influence kids who might not be as politically aware or active, because it is hard in high school. We're not, we don't see the big picture all the time, um, and I think it definitely can be valuable to have parents who can kind of bring their kids or go with their kids or their kids can bring them to different events because then you have this like family discussion happening that wouldn't otherwise take place. Yeah, Ex excellent point. Um, okay, back here. Thank you. Hi, speaking as one of the parents. Um, <laughs> first of all, the rally was so impressive and just seeing, you know, eight-year-olds who spoke and seniors who were there who participated in protests in the 60s and the 50s and just were so excited to see everyone up there. It was amazing to be there. And I just wanted to go back to a point that one of you made about the local rally. And I think that's so important because, I mean, I marched in the Women's March in San Francisco and I watched stuff on TV, and, you know, the, the bigger rallies, but it, it was so important, I thought, to have this local event that you did. And a lot of people were like, well, should I go to the city or should I do this other thing? And I think anyone who came to this Redwood City Rally was so excited to be there. Absolutely. Because there was people they knew, and there was our own community there in all different ages, and you know, seeing you guys lead this thing was incredible. Um, and, and just seeing the support, I mean, I was one of the, the volunteers giving out water and snacks, <laughs> and we were giving them out for free, but everybody kept saying, but I want to buy them. We want to give you money. And I'm like, well, we don't know how to take the money. But there was a lot of support. And I think, I hope that wherever you are all going, that you can bring that local feel to whatever it is you're doing. You'll be in Washington, Stefan, but, um, you know, that's like obviously a national place. But... I think anything you can keep on the local level, like I'm be curious your ideas how you can do that, you know, just keep going with it. So my question, I guess, would be how do you keep things local but also have them be part of something bigger? Thanks, Mom. <laughs> 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 that's cool. I, I think that's one of the, yeah. That's my mom. <laughs> I Thanks, think, Mom. <laughs> I think one of the big things with kind of making things have that local feel is the personal connections and I know even the day of the rally like people would walk through the square and they'd ask me as we were setting up they go oh what's happening or they'd say oh we're we're walking by now we're coming back in a couple hours and we'd have like a little 
conversation about it. And I think being able to have those one-on-one -on -one interactions with the people that you're trying to influence and the people that you want to work with is what really kind of gives it that raw, natural, local feeling and what makes people feel like they are an individual that's valued in the community, in the protest, in the event, whatever it may be. I think being able to actually talk to the people that are coming to your events is what really gives it that feel. That's true. Um, at the heart of Peninsula Peace and Justice Center, we are a community-based organization. We, we have no aspirations of being statewide or you know, even uh, Bay Area or anything like that. We're Peninsula, you know, mm -hmm. from San Mateo to Cupertino or so is where our membership is. And I, it, it's important because it is a powerful organizing tool. We are almost out of time, so I'm sure you had something great no, to say, no, but no, okay. uh, I, I will start with you then, Stefan. Um, I, I would like you to each take uh, 30 seconds or so to uh, whatever is important to you at the end to say here. We, what did you come out of this experience with? What's the most important thing that you're going to go off to Georgetown with? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think, I think uh, kind of going off of your local question, I mean, politics is personal. It's, and, and getting students to organize events, you, they're going to have, they're going to uh, lead events and, and, and organize events that are inherently local and personal because most of the time they've grown up in these communities their entire lives. They're much less nationally minded. Um, so I, I think that this kind of really demonstrates the benefits of having young people lead events. Is they they're really uh, very in touch with their communities and very in, in, in touch with other people around them. Let me turn to Ria for the same thing. And you're going to get 15 seconds. Uh -oh. I'm sorry, we're really <laughs> running out of time. Um, <laughs> uh, Not your fault. Just just one moment. I guess I'd like to focus on uh, in, in that video. There was the little girls. Uh, yeah. You know, standing on the stage, calling out, leading the the cheer um, and that is really powerful what we can do with that because obviously we're trying to talk to um, you know get the attention of politicians and get them involved in listening to us but there's this whole other younger side of you know we had little like seven-year-olds um, coming up to us and really wanting to participate so young people our age have the ability to get even younger kids to continue that. I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut you off because right. we're, we're out of time. Ria, Stefan, and Sophie, thank you so much for joining us. Let's give them a big Happy hand and thank them. <laughs> You've been watching Other Voices brought to you by Peninsula Peace and Justice Center. We're here every month. We will see you again next month. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.